A great kick and snare sound are such a huge part of a, a good sounding concert. Talk a little bit about what you do to nail those. Yeah, and we have a phenomenal drummer, Phil Lawson, and uh, he has great gear. Uh, we've been able to be very um, open about mic selections, and you know, we have a really great dialogue with the band, and they're always very interested in trying something cool. Um, so it's been nice to kind of be on that vision quest and find things that really work for us. Uh, so on the kicks, I have a, a 91 on the inside and an SEV kick on the outside. Um, all of those two bus to a kick group so on the kit group, I've got a couple of things going on. First up is the U76 as it's known here. Um, not a whole lot, maybe one to three dB a reduction, kind of a medium attack, fast release. This works great. I have it at four to one, just sort of rounds out the kit, gives it that punch that these units are known for. And then from there, and this is something that I've done for a while, I have a graphic EQ inserted. And uh, you know, with kick drum especially, depending on the tuning or the room or the stage or whatever it is, you might get these weird resonances, right? Like you'll get that 125 hertz. Uh, and if you just kind of want to notch it out, this to me is the easiest way to do that, you know? And the cool thing about the Rivage is you can send this down to your faders, right? So I'll just very quickly find this on my RTA, say, oh, I got some problems going on at 50 hertz today. And I can literally just notch that guy right out. So you're flattening this out every, every day? Every single day. And then if I have problem areas, I can just go right to this. Oh, nice. Yeah, and it's it's a little bit nicer because I can keep the generic sound with the parametric that I have going on or have been having going on. And then just this is a problem solver every day. I do this on the kick and the snare as well, just because you might have a weird resonance or something. And in the middle of the show, if the drum tunes down, you know, people come in, temperatures change. You don't have time to run up there and say, hey, can you tweak that, you know, snare or whatever. So right. this is an easy way to do that. On the snare processing, same exact deal. I've got the snare top, snare bottom, and I actually have a snare two that all goes to this group. First up is the dance plugin. And we talked a little bit about this before, but this is a great way to get rid of some hi-hat, right? This hi-hat bleed that's coming in because I've got a snare primary and I also have a snare second mic. So this kind of eliminates both of those. I have it set fairly tight just to get that initial snap. And the Bracasti that I have um, as the room mic kind of rounds out that snare sound. So that's better to keep it isolated on the front end. From there, it goes to a dynamic EQ. I'm doing something a little counterintuitive with this, which is kind of my normal. I usually do things very wrong and then somehow it ends up right. But uh, I'm doing a big cut at uh, around 500 Hertz in the snare. Uh, this is a chrome over brass snare. So it's got die cast tubes, kind of a honky sounding snare drum. And this gets rid of a lot of that honk. And the nice part about the dynamic EQ is I can kind of set my cue. I can make it a real wide or a real narrow, whatever really works that day. But in addition to that, if I feel like I'm not getting a lot of body out of the snare, I actually have a multi-band expander. Uh, band set up here. So I'm giving myself a little boost at 118 oh, Hertz nice. to give it a, just a little more yeah, hit. Full, yeah. Yeah. And, and sometimes it doesn't need that. And sometimes I'll even go the other way and like, oh, I've got too much today or whatever. But sometimes I just like to, to hear that. And uh, I actually have this set up in a couple of scenes to defeat that band. So, you know, some bigger sounds uh, will come in certain times of the set and, you know, I can thin it out in others, but that works out really well. And then after that, is our friend with the U76. And I think my favorite thing about this and all of these models is uh, what used to be called British mode and is commonly referred to as all buttons in mode. So this would be when you would take all four of these ratio buttons and you just right. slam them all in. And sometimes it takes two or three times. To yeah, get a oh, stick. absolutely. And you know, if you've got sausage fingers like me, sometimes it doesn't work. But uh, I love all button mode and it just creates this harmonic distortion. You know, it's like a snare drum hitting a brick wall sort of thing. I love it and it, it works out really well. Um, um, and it allows you to kind of lower and uh, make a, a, a slower release time and get that kind of drawn out snare sound because right. it's really compressing the transient a lot. This U76 crushes British mode. It's so good. And it does it really well. The slower release just allows it to compress that transient. It's, it's just really a wonderful tool. So it works great on the snare and works great all over the place. But uh, And then from there, it just goes to the master bus. Yeah, and then uh, in addition to that, I've got some toms groups. Uh, I've got the dance plugin, a dynamic EQ, just sort of grabbing all the toms. And then I have a cymbals group, which is my hat and overhead, stuff like that, and uh, 369.
It's just a great kind of all around, a uh, little bit of a smearer sort of plug-in is what I would call it. But uh, it works great. And uh, all of those different groups together allow me to process those different pieces together. And it, it really gives me a great deal of control. Nice. Yeah.